So let's take a look in this tub here. I pick out some random stuff that I'm going to identify because uh, why not? Let's see what we can come up with here. Uh, okay, it's a big old packet of Bolivia. I just want to see. Let's do this one. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna grab some totally random ones here. Take them over to my desk, and we'll just go through the process of identifying them. Cause why not? I'm gonna sift through these and kind of decide which ones I want to go through identifying with you. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, why not um, do some of these identification videos because. Um, I don't do a whole lot of these, and uh, I think that this is actually the kind of video that might help people out. Yeah, first I think I'm going to go with this British Guiana stamp. Let's take a look at this guy in the catalog first and see what's going on and where it's at. British Guiana. So we're going to go to, you guessed it. A to B and let's see what we've got here adjust my camera I'm gonna freehand this from this uh, point on I'm pretty sure so okay now in the Scott catalog at least in this digital version that I have uh, you gotta go to the uh, volume 1b for all the B's it'll open up British stuff and we'll get down to British Guiana. Okay, now one thing that I am going to check on first of all with this stamp is what does it say? It says postage and revenue. Okay, it doesn't really say a year on there that I can see. I can see it's canceled 61. So that might be an indicator, and we're kind of looking, it looks like some kind of wheat field stuff going on here. So uh, let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through. I'm going to get over to uh, kind of uh, where the year should be here. 61, they're saying. Okay, so now I, oops, I've already made it to the British Honduras, which that can't be right. So, looks like British Guiana, looks like their general issues, stop 66. So, um, I know that because we switched to the postage due section right there. So I'm going to go ahead and just look around in here somewhere and see if we can find the design, uh, which would be some kind of wheat field stuff, right? Also, one thing that I'm going to be looking for is it's got the little queen's head there. Now, you'll notice most of these have the queen's head. Now, this is a horizontal design stamp, so I'm going to be kind of looking for that. Um, what does it say on there? It says rice combine, rice combine. Uh, so I'm looking for any of these that would happen to have the same design and then the queen's head in the corner and um, You know, it looks like it's pretty similar to this one uh, But definitely isn't that one thing that I'm also going to be taking notice note of is I'm going to be looking at Since all these designs are kind of under the same section They like to group them together at the bottom and give you the different design types um, like what's actually on the stamps so it's a pretty good little section to look at there. I'm gonna say, hey, do I see rice combine anywhere in this little blurb here under the images? Now, I don't so far, so um, in the sake of this not taking forever, uh, hold on, let me try to find this thing and I'll let you know where I found it. Ew, whoops, the moment I set the camera down, I immediately noticed it does say rice combine, okay? So it is one of these designs. Now I'm looking at it, Mm, I'll say it's probably either an A60A, could be an A60C, which is a map. Uh, you see, this one has like little, um, like, uh, gosh, I don't know what you call that, leaves, right, in the uh, borders. So it's probably not that, and it could also be like this similar, this toucan design. Uh, that one's an A60I, Jesus. So anyways, um, now... The trick will be on this, on rice combine, what it says, he says designs, two cent, botanical gardens. Uh, so it's definitely not that, six cent, rice combine. So we can just scroll down to this bottom here, 
and uh, or this uh, bottom section, see, we're looking for the sixth scent. This yellow green, okay, I would buy into that. The stamp looks yellow green. This is from 1954. That would go with our cancel, 61. Of course, the cancel has to be after the, the stamp was released, so that makes sense. And this is, as I look at this, what I'm looking for is, for one thing, are there multiple six cents, you know, with different colors? No, all they've got is the yellow green six cents. And as I, the, the paints go vertical downwards. So I look up at the top just to make sure at this top part here, um, there's not any notes about go and check these other numbers and make sure that it's not them. Actually, see, it does say C, C numbers 279 to 287. Um, I'm mistaken, <coughs> sorry. So that would be here. Now, the thing is, there's no six cent. So I know that it can't be any of these. These are just queen types of that 1954 release design, design release, so whatever. Um, basically, you can just deduce it's got to be the six cent yellow green. So we're talking about this is a number 258 and it was released 1954 and um, <clears throat> it's only worth 25 cents used, so not a whole lot. But that is the end of that one. Number 258 from 1954, British Guiana. Booyah, so that was simple and easy. Got that one there, actually has a nice postmark. As I look at it being um, British Guiana, I can actually put that in my album, why not? I have a little uh, page for that, so I'm gonna keep this one and put that in my album. Now we're gonna move on to the next one. Let's just choose some random one here. Let's go with this Republic Argentina stamp and go through the process. Okie doke. Now, these catalogs are all broken down into volumes, and volume one here, of course, has uh, the US, A, and B in the alphabet. So, I don't have to switch catalogs here. This is being Argentina. Let's just look for Argentina. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry, where is it? Australia, Argentina. Okay, so we made it to Argentina. Now, I'm also gonna look at the stamp and say, hey, does this have a year on it? Mm. It says 1981, probably hard to see, but down at the bottom, it's really small, 1981. So that's gonna be the first thing I'm gonna look for in this is let's make our way to 81. So we're gonna skip through a whole bunch of pages here. 35, 46, 54, 59, 70, 63. Okay, making our way over to 1981. Why do I do that? So that I don't have to look through a million different stamp designs, right? Look at the stamp first when you're trying to identify stamps, see if it has a clue on there. Okay, we made it to 1980. Now, so this one, I, usually what I do is I kind of take another visual of the stamp, I'm like, okay, it's the guy, he's got the button down jacket and he's holding something in up, up over his shoulder. So let's try to find that kind of design in here. Now, okay, that right there is a similar shape. It's kind of a lar longer vertical, larger stamp than the other ones. And that's similar to me. Now, this one is a 50,000 pesos. So I can already say, as you, as I was suspecting, this is it. You know, you just look here and none of them is 50,000. So it's definitely not that guy. Uh, so I'm just gonna keep looking through and we were saying 81, just to make sure, let me take another, yep, 81. Now, uh, one thing I'm gonna look at just as a side note, you know, I'll try to educate you guys about my thought process, if it helps at all. Um, you know, if it was released 81, then basically I'm looking at these going 81, 81, 81, boom, 82, right there. So it should be before that stamp, because that one was 82, so it should should be somewhere here in the vicinity of, right, and this is how I narrow it down to, like, so that's the last 1980, that's the first 81, so basically the stamp should be somewhere in these rows up until the first 82, because this is all 81 right here. So that's where I'm looking. So let me go and look through these and we'll see if I can find it in here. Okay, so following true to form of life in general, I couldn't find it. 
go figure, what the heck? I thought that that all seemed pretty logical. Now, there's lots of things to do that I could end up finding. For one thing, which I often do, which is the easiest thing to be honest most of the time, just Google it. So what I would do, but I wanna run through this in the catalog with you, but what I would normally do to be honest with you, I would Google 50,000 pesos and it says on the stamp, General, what does it say? Jose de San Martin and scrolling letters there on the side. So that's what I would Google. 50,000 peso Jose de San Martin, General Jose de San Martin stamp. And I bet you I'd, I'd go to images and I'd look at the images and somebody's probably selling it or it's listed somewhere and it would probably tell me the number right then and that would be the end of it. And I'd just look and find it in the catalog, simple enough, right? But what I actually, instead of doing that, what I ended up doing is now this catalog, this digital one has a search function up on the top right, which is a lovely little thing. It takes it a sec. Now I've already typed this in here. The first thing that I did was I typed in Jose de San Martin and it lists out the different pages where they have the keyword or any of the keywords that pop up. We got 629, we've got 642, 650, kind of gives you the description. Generally what I do is I'll go click on the first one. I'll say, okay, uh, six page 629, Jose de San Martin. Now it highlights the different keywords that come up. So there's Jose or San Martin or Dos San or any of that in any of these. Now, it just so happens that all four of those keywords, Jose de San Martin are littered throughout this entire catalog. They're all over the place. So uh, which one do you look for? Basically, I just went looking down and was like, okay, I don't see it anywhere. One other side note, something that I was looking for that I often do is I'm trying to find 50,000 pesos. So one of these has to say 50,000 pesos. I mean, 10 cent, no, 75 cent, no. I mean, is any of these uh, values actually 50,000 pesos? No. So the first one was a fail. So I went to the second page, looked around, short story, it was a fail. I didn't find it anywhere in here either. I'm at 76 right now, so it doesn't really make sense either. And so I kind of worked my way down. Now I did a few pages and said, okay, this isn't working. What can I put in this search bar that's gonna narrow this down? So I decided 50,000, okay? And I searched for that. And so I went to the first page, which is, it says 650, it says Jose de San Martin, 1982. Well, son of a gun, there's our guy. Okay, so he showed up and it just so happens it's, after 81 in the catalog, so my first kind of thought didn't work, I had to search for it. Now, it is Guillermo Brown type of 1980 is what it says up there. So anyways, there's our guy. And wouldn't you know it, 50,000 pesos. So this says it's actually a 1982 release. Okay, so um, it's number 1376. It's worth a dollar used, which mine is Sepia and Carmine. Okay, that would be the peso numbers, actually Carmine. Sepia, sorry. So that's how I found this one. So, so simple enough. I mean, I, I, this is where it kind of can be easier if you just go to Google and just Google, you know, some of the information you see on the front of the stamp. But ultimately that worked just fine. I found the stamp. So, We've got ourselves a number 1376 from 1982 of this Argentina stamp. There you go. Okay, so that was cool. Two down, let's move on to the next one. Next up, what I'm gonna go for is gonna be, let's just stick with these ones here, right here. This guy, Correos to Chile. Okay, so it's a Chilean stamp, so I'm gonna go to Chile. I'm gonna have to actually open up a different volume in my catalog. This is a $3 stamp. It says on the bottom, Casa de Monedad. Okay, well, you know, ca Casa de Monedad. So, and it says R. Freire on there. So, looking at the information on the stamp is gonna give me little hints. I also, I also don't see a year, which anyways, like we just found out, can be a little misleading, but anyways, that's the kind of info I'm looking for, and also, of course, the portrait. So let me pull up the C catalog. Okay, so we're gonna close out of this catalog. We're gonna go to volume two, which is C through F. I am using the 2021 catalog here. 
I go down to this little icon here, it opens up the side menu bar, and we'll go down to what do we say, chili. Okay, now oh, let me draw my stamps or my tongs here. And then we're gonna try and find this guy in the catalog. Um, now, this looks older, but it's not, you know, really old. It's not like, I don't think this is 1800s. This is probably 1900s. Why do I know that? Just from the look of the stamp, to be honest. And plus, you'll look right here at the very beginning, you can kind of see the original earliest stamps. I mean, I don't see it there. And I'm just gonna literally scroll through and uh, try and find the same design. So we're looking for a portrait. And I actually, uh, personally, like I try to take like a mental image of the guy's face and what he's wearing and just what he looks like. And I like to look for a similar, similar design. Um, something I could do right off the bat is just type his name into the search bar like I just did, but uh, you know, sometimes I just kind of do as I feel. Well, wouldn't you know it, hey, there he is. That's gotta be him. It says Ramon Freire, that's our initials on the stamp, R. Freire, and it looks exactly like him too. Um, so I'm buying into, that's probably our guy, he's got the mustache, he's got the same expression, same head, there you go. Uh, wouldn't you know it, it's a $3 stamp too, so that's a good start. It says A142 Design, it says that these ones are 1956 to 58. Now, this is the $3, so let's see. Okay, so everything's in pesos, so I guess we're, peso, see, I don't know everything, right? Uh, pesos, a dollar, I guess. Uh, so three pesos. Now they have 3P light blue here. This is 293A would be this number. It says it's unwatermarked. Now, <clears throat> they've also got a, right below it with a watermark 215, a number 298, that's violet blue. So it's either it's, it's, it's either this one, which is violet blue, or it's either light violet blue. So um, besides trying to determine based on the color, which is probably a pretty minor difference, I'm gonna go and look at the watermark. That will be my true indicator. If it has watermark 215, then I know it's a 298. And if it doesn't have a watermark, I know it's 293A. And uh, that's how I'm gonna do this. So. What, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the front of the section of chili where it lists out all the different watermarks. Uh, so it looks like there's only one watermark. That's simple enough, thanks uh, chili. So if it has watermark 215, we should have this star in a shield design. So let me get out my watermark tray, throw this guy in there, see if it has that watermark. Okie dokie. So here's our stamps. Toss them in there, my tray's a little dusty. Oh well, whatever. We're, oh, I can already see it before I even squirted the watermark fluid. You can see it. You can see the imprint on the back of the dry stamp. Let's see, there, so go figure. With the watermark fluid, it's dead obvious though. So this is definitely watermarked. So now, let me uh, switch back here. Give me one sec. If we go back to my computer, so we were looking at it's gonna be watermark 215. So what we've got there is number 298. No doubt about it, because of the watermark. 25 cent used cat value, that guy is used. And um, yeah, it's a nice little vertical pair. So that was simple enough. So it's from 1956 to 58 and it's number 298. There you go. Now, just so that you're aware, you really do, when you think you found the stamp, you've got to look at the bottom of the section here. Say, okay, that's our stamp. But read the notes. You've got to read the notes. If you don't, you can misidentify the stamp. It's happened to me many times. I neglect to read the notes sometimes. So it says for overprints, see these numbers. Now it says 072 to 076. The O indicates official mail. So if it did happen to have some kind of overprint, which an overprint is something like this, for example, it has additional information overprinted on it, like a new value or whatever. Well, just so that you guys know, um, just to give you the hint in case you don't know, what I do is 
uh, official mail or air mail, semi-postal, whatever it may be, they're at the back of the section. So I'm actually gonna skip to China. Which brings me to China, which just starts right up here at the very top corner. And then I back page and I look for official stamps. Well, darn, wouldn't you know it, there's official stamps right there. So here's my official stamp section. Has all the different overprints as you can see. So if I were to have an overprint, that would be how I would go about looking at that. I'd go to China because it's the next one in the alphabet. And that way it just skips to the back of Chile. And um, then I just back page to the official section and would go looking at the numbers they said to look at and yada yada. So anyway, that would be the sequence, but we've clearly identified the stamp. So let's move on. Okie dokie. So we got it all set. Piece of cake, huh? Nice little vertical pair here, number 298. I forgot to write the year actually, so 56 to 58. I like to put the year as well. Okay, cool. Done, moving on to the next. Let's go with this guy. This actually looks kind of interesting, whatever is going on here. So this is Guatemala. Small vertical stamp and uh, it's 10 centavos. Now, okay, uh, as I look through the camera here, it says Timbra, Timbra de Centavos. Now, just my experience tells me if it says Timber on it, it kind of rings a bell, Timber Tax Stamp. So this might actually be a back of book stamp. Now it could be a general release, could be definitive or whatever, but the Timber, the Timbra, that uh, kind of makes me think it's back of book. Nonetheless, um, I don't see a year on there at least that I can make out. So I don't really have a whole lot of info. All I can say is it's a 10 cent stamp from Guatemala. So it does look old, you know, um, in general, like let's say you put it next to this United Arab, Arab Republic stamp. It just generally looks older, doesn't it? So I don't think this is gonna be anything like, you know, I'd be surprised if it was 1950s onward or anything, could be, but this looks older, so I'm gonna start at the beginning of Guatemala in the catalog and just kind of see if I can find anything similar and move on from there. Okie dokie, so I went ahead and took the liberty of just getting us to Guatemala. So uh, Guatemala, it actually starts here. So everything after this is gonna be Guatemala. Now I'm gonna just kind of go from up and down in the, in the columns here and see if I see anything similar. Now I did see in the design, it has a little bird, which is probably the same guy, Quetzal here, but this is a totally different design. Um, it's like a bird sitting on, oh, that one looks actually quite similar, see, but that uh, is definitely not the same. Uh, let me grab it real quick. Let's see, this guy has kind of a, it's not a perfect circle in the center, whereas this one has a nice oval, right? So completely different. Um, so I'm looking for, um, this birdie, he's smaller for one thing. Things that I'm looking at, like the banner on the top of it. Uh, sorry for the poor lighting, but you may be able to tell the banner kind of whoops, swoops down, right? It's got this kind of swoop curvature to it. So like little details like that are what I'm looking at on the stamp. So <clears throat> if it doesn't have the same characteristics, then I'm and keep moving on. So even though that one looks similar, it's not that like done deal. Um, so as I look through this catalog, and I am I'm scanning it with my eyes like this, and these columns going up to down, and seeing if I can see Quetzal anywhere, and I don't see it. Now oh, this one, I will say, actually looks quite similar you guys see that same kind of design um actually that looks like the right design to be honest now what's interesting is this one's surcharged but it sure looks like the right design it has even though Koreos is over it has the swooping banner there with the letters and it has the sort of odd shaped center portion so that's interesting now what i would take from this is it's definitely not this stamp because mine isn't surcharged but finding a similar design can sometimes be enough to give you the hints to find the right stamp 
it tells me right there, I should have caught onto that, revenue stamps. Now, part of the reason that I couldn't find this in the back of books, so you go here, this is the last section, right? There's uh, Jenea. So all of these are Guatemala. Uh, that's what we're on, right? Yeah. And then we go to postal tax stamps. We've got special delivery stamps, air post official, official stamps. Now, there are no revenue stamps in this regular catalog. So I think that what I need to do is, it told me it's a revenue stamp. I need to find the section with revenue stamps. Lucky for me, I have actually bothered to buy the uh, classic specialized catalog of stamps and covers. So let's dive into this and see if I can find, well, we're gonna scroll down to Guatemala and we're gonna look in the back of Guatemala. So I'm gonna skip right over to Haiti because it goes Guatemala to Haiti. So let's go to Haiti and then backtrack to Guatemala and see if I can find revenue stamps. Okay, so Haiti starts up here. So all the rest of this, these look similar to the one in the normal catalog. And I'm gonna scan through and try and find revenue stamps. Now, I don't see it. I do not see, I see postal tax. And then we're at air or official and then air post official stamps up here, sorry. Air post, semi postal. I don't see the design anywhere. So now we're just back to air post stamps. These are number C, you know, C stamps. And I don't see it. it it's not there. Now, I knew that this was going to be a weird one. And I knew it. The only reason is because of that timber. Okay, timber, to, that right at the bottom it says timber. I think this is a timber tax stamp. And it's a revenue stamp based on what it said in the catalog because of the design. And um, I don't think that I've got it in the catalog here. Now I'm gonna verify this and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, so it was a big old fail. Um, now, what I did was I went right up to Google here and did Guatemala revenue stamp, timber to ten uh, centavos, um, search for that. And uh, basically first thing I did was I went looking through the images and I'm trying to find, you know, anything that looks the same. The only one I really found was this oddball listing on hip stamp. Now you'll notice he's got what looks to be almost the exact same stamp right there. Doesn't give any information about what it is. This is just, he calls this a lot of 20 fiscals. Okay, so this is the closest actual image I could find. Now the one that he has, I was looking, it says 1898 right there. Mine does not have that printed on there. Mine's like this one, there's no year. So that's actually the only closest image I could find. So let me close that, because uh, that was a fail. And now I'm convinced it's not even in my specialized catalog. I'd probably need a specialized catalog specifically for Guatemala, maybe even a specialized revenue stamp catalog to find it. Now, when you go, here, uh, like uh, the first link was actually Wikipedia and they're like adhesive res revenue stamps, they were issued in 1868 um, and preceded the first postage stamps uh, of that country by three years. You'll look at the picture over here and once you know it, it says timber to Guatemala. That's similar. So I'm convinced this is a revenue stamp, but um, unfortunately it's not in either of my catalogs and I can't really find it on the internet. That being said, this being a revenue stamp is definitely a back of book stamp. And this one is definitely old. I would say it's right at the cusp of, you know, the 1900s or something when this was released, most likely. But I'm not going to spend any more time on it because for one thing, being back of book, this is the kind of stamp a lot of people wouldn't even care about, period. Just not interested in. Who cares, right? It's not even a definitive or commemorative or general issue at all. It's just back of book. This is a fiscal revenue stamp, you know, uh, like they say here, it, it issued, they issued revenue stamps to collect documentary taxes, tax on foreign bills, blah, 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 right? So this just isn't gonna be in my catalog and I just have to swallow that. Now, 
I just want to mention, um, what are the, you know, I'm surprised. What are the odds I'd actually pick a stamp that I can't find in this video? Go freaking figure. That's how it goes, right? But I bet you I could figure out this stamp. That was my stomach, if you heard that. I could figure out this stamp, but um, I'd have to spend maybe some money on a catalog or just go digging and digging on the internet through a bunch of different forums and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I could check Stamp World. I could keep going. You know, I could really give it everything I've got to identify this stamp, but I would just about guarantee you guys at the end of the day, once I get the number and figure out what it is, I'm like, oh, it's a number R or something, something. It's probably worth 25 cents in the catalog. Probably ain't worth jack. And um, so I'm just gonna move on. Kind of weird. I didn't expect to have kind of a fail stamp, but that's part of why I actually picked this out is it looked interesting. And I thought, oh, let's get that one to go. Um, that's just how it goes in the stamp world. There are so many different stamps from so many different countries with different purposes, and you're not gonna be able to find every single stamp listed in your catalogs unless you've got them all. And come on, let's get real. That's ridiculous to have all of the catalogs of the world especially even back a book, holy moly. So we'll just chalk this up to, hey, I at least have ascertained what it is. I know what it was probably used for. And in my experience, these kinds of back of book stamps just aren't worth anything. So they're not worth much more of my time. So we're just gonna move on to the next one. Hopefully we'll have a little bit better success. So that was an interesting one. Now let's move on to this guy. Also an interesting looking stamp. It's fairly big. Nice square stamp. It's got our man here with a beard and mustache. Mm, bunch of Spanish written on there. Sesquintensar, sesquicentenario do nascimento do Dr. Herman Blumenau. This is 1819 to 1969. Okay, lived a nice long life. Uh, that can't be, can it? That'd be too long. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> now, um, Casa de Moeda at the bottom. Do Brazil. I think the engraver would have been the Grab J.R. Silva. And it's a 20 cent Brazilian stamp. So, um, let's just go hop into Brazil and see if I can find this guy in the catalog. Okie doke, I found it. Now, let's see where we're at here. Uh page 603 now just so you know i started at the beginning because it looked kind of old and i thought hey maybe it is here at the beginning and i started skimming through and was like nope 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 just didn't find it one thing i had an epiphany on when i was um looking scrolling through the pages i i looked back at it and i said sesquicentario like what does that mean oh it, it, i thought oh 100 year anniversary no 150 year anniversary. I just deduced that because look at the dates, right? The 19 to 69. So that's 150 years. So this is a 150 year anniversary stamp is what's going on. I thought, aha, so they're celebrating the anniversary and they're saying it's 1969 is the 150 year. And before I got there, I actually had an epiphany. I'm like, I bet you it's a 69. So I did scroll through all of them, but um, I was correct. It ended up being 1969 was the actual um, date it was released or the year it was released. And sure enough, so here we are. See, 1969 in the catalog, there's our guy, Dr. Herman Blumenau. So there was only one release for this stamp. And um, it turns out he actually lived until 1899. Uh, so he founded the uh, Blumenau, Santa Catarina State. Okay, uh, I'm not really familiar, but there's our guy. So uh, as I was searching through, I actually had the epiphany, which helped me. I would have got there scrolling through the pages anyway, but I was like, I bet you it's 69. That was it, so that was my clue. So here he is, uh, released 1969, makes sense. Number 1149. For 25 cents in the catalog used mine is used so we figured that one out wasn't super hard um, but yeah what took a little extra second was that it looked kind of old and so I started at the beginning and um, so anyway that was the spiel let's put this in a stock card alrighty cool got them all set that one was not bad spent less time on that than the last one that's for sure so let's move on over to this Bolivian stamp so it says that it's 
Looks like it says 140 BS. Sorry, guys. Whoops. I'm not used to freehanding. 140 BS. Um, and it says Revolution something Julio 1946. So uh, it has like, it looks like some people, I guess, revolting or something. And uh, yeah, I'm going to go hop into Bolivia and see if I can find a similar design. And um, the 1946 down at the bottom right is probably going to be a clue of where it might be in the catalog. Here we go. So I hopped into Bolivia and I just went ahead and scooted right over to 1946. Now, wouldn't you know it, um, La Tida found my stamp right there in the bottom corner. For those of you who don't know in the digital catalog, you can double click and you can zoom in. Makes it a little easier, gives you a nice up close look. Also down here is this little scroll bar. You can actually zoom in even more um, if it would uh, want to. Okay, so see, so like I'm Mac zoomed in and then I can click and drag over and yeah, there they are. That looks exactly the same as my stamp. So I'm buying into that. Now it says people attacking presidential palace. Uh, yeah, okay. So. Um, Done deal. Um, now mine was, what was it? Sorry, 140. Okay, well there it is, 140. Greenish blue, that's the exact color that I would agree. And so according to this, it's number 320. It's worth 25 cents, released in 1947. So once again, the year on the actual stamp did not um, uh, coincide exactly with where it was in the catalog. But whatever, um, it, it still gives you a general indication of kind of where to hunt around in the catalog. So that makes sense. So now I will say that I am going to scroll down and read the stuff here at the bottom because it's important. And so it's first anniversary revolution. They exist and perforate. Uh, those guys for each pair is 40 bucks. Okay. So it's not like there's any other numbers that I have to look at and just verify that, you know, like perfs or anything like that. This is my stamp. It's a done deal. Number 320 from 1947. That was it. On to the next. Okie doke. Got it. Cool. Next one. Let's finish off these Spanish countries here. Let's do this little tiny guy. Colombia. Now this one, you probably could tell, it's been overprinted. Correos. So, um, I'm sure there was an original release and this is probably an overprint. I could be wrong, but that's what it looks like. So I'm going to hop into Columbia here, and uh, as I look at this guy, I don't see any year. It says American Banknote Company down at the bottom. Something about construction. The palace, the communicatio is, uh, so maybe some sort of palace, okay. Well, let's hop in there and see what I can find. Okay, so I found something similar, and this is going to be just like that timber, uh, that revenue stamp that we had. Uh, started at the beginning here of Columbia. It looks relatively old, but it's definitely not any of these. So I ended up scrolling through. Um, they have a lot of little itty bitty stamps. You can probably tell. I mean, these are tiny little guys, little itty bitty stamps. And so that's kind of a theme for them. They like tiny stamps, but um, I didn't find it until I got to... Hold on, sorry. Too far? Uh oh. I lost it. Oh, no, okay. So all the way up here, um, found this guy. Actually, let me zoom in so you can see. Now, <clears throat> sorry. This is, this is our stamp, but and it has even the Correos on there, just like ours. Now it tells me it's a number RA whatever, overprinted in black. So we already know it's the same kind of thing as that other one. Uh, this is a revenue stamp that's been overprinted. So, um, now this, uh, being an overprint and a revenue stamp, still it's listed right here, uh, you know, at 1948 area in the catalog. So, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is our stamp. Um, it looks exactly the same. And even though it's a revenue stamp, here it is in the catalog. So anyway, that was my point. It didn't happen to be in the back. Now, it doesn't have any stuff on the bottom saying go and check these other ones. Uh, they have inverted overprints and double overprints. Cool. So that's good to know. But this is definitely our stamp. Now, 
this one that I have here is a one cent. So this is gonna be number 562. It's a one cent olive. It's worth 25 cents used. For those of you, you who don't know, the first one here is always mint or unused, and this one's always used, the second column. So uh, that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking to see, is it used or not? As a matter of fact, whoops, I stand corrected. This one is not used. So I was looking at the wrong column. I do that sometimes. It's still the same price either way, but it would be this, this column here, unused or mint, 25 cent value. We've got ourselves a number 562 from 1948, done deal. Well, that was good. I was wondering if that one was going to spiral into being a pain in the ass as well, but it wasn't. It was right there in the catalog. Booyah! So that was cool. On to the next one. Let's do this guy. South Africa. One shilling. What does this say there? Postage? Okay. And it has South Africa written in um, the two different languages. That's a pretty common theme for these stamps. I think that's French. The Sweet Africa. And uh, Union 50, Uni, so let's say 50 year or something anniversary, perhaps. Um, this one's definitely used. Let's hop into South Africa, see if I can find it. Okay, so this one was not too difficult to find. What I pretty much did was I just went to South Africa there, started scrolling through by looking at the designs. Just to mention, sometimes something I like to do, I like to double click on the page, it takes you to a single page, enlarges it, and then you get a better looking. I just kind of scroll down and just look at the different designs and see if any of them catch my eye as being the correct one. I didn't happen to do that this time, but that's just a tip. That's something I do. Uh, so anyway, I was just scrolling through. Now, one thing that I thought in my head when I was looking for this right away was this probably won't be hard to find. For one thing, the colors stand out, the yellow and the blue, plus the big old wheel design. I mean, that's not a, you know, it's probably not going to blend in very well. All I had to do was skip through a few pages and boom, there it is in the catalog. So that was nice and easy. They say pushing wheel uphill. I always do like they give those descriptions of what the design is. Sometimes they're vague. That one makes sense. Uh, here it says, actually, let me zoom in again. Sorry, I'm getting better at this as I go for you guys. Uh, so you can see better. So we got the one shilling, we know that. And... Uh, just to mention also, in case this ever confuses people, they don't actually give a description of the one shilling in this little uh, sentence here beneath the image because they gave the description right here. And so, you know, if ordered by denomination, it would have gone six pence, one shilling, one shilling, uh, six pence, and that would have been the proper order. But they left that out because they bothered to put it here with the design they chose to put in the catalog anyway. So you just kind of have to have the sense to know they left that out of the description here because they put it right there. They're not going to list it twice. That's what happened there, just so you know. So anyways, this is our one shilling. So done deal. Um, 238, one shilling, dark blue and black. It says it's worth 25 cent used. Ours is used, so that's our cat price. So, um, and then at the bottom, do they have anything more? They say, see these numbers? Okay. Well, let's take a look just for fun. They say 245 to 246. We know this is an A111 design. 245 to 246. Okay, well, it couldn't be either of those because we don't have the right design there. Now, it also says up higher, 248 to 249. Well, son of a gun, that is there. 249, look, A111, 10 cent. Oh, wait a minute. It's a 10 cent. And so it has different perfs if you wanted to get into that, yada yada, with a, with a different watermark. <clears throat> oh, sorry, same watermark. But that's, that's why I like to read the stuff at the bottom because it says check these numbers and make sure. And so we did. And we know it's not this one. Even though it has the same design, it's a 10 cent. And ours is a one shilling, which would make it 238. So done deal. Um, that's our stamp from 1960, number 238, worth 25 cents. Alrighty, got that one all set. Just another in the pile, we're just cruising on through. So, next, let's go for this guy. Kind of older looking. Now, what automatically clues me in is Siam. I think that means Thailand, so I'm going to go straight to Thailand. You can tell this is old, just look at the design, look at the perf style on this thing. 
Um, it's just an older looking stamp period. So I expect to find it kind of earlier in the catalog, assuming it's not in the back of book. Uh, but I think this is probably a general issue. So let's take a look. I'm gonna hop into Thailand right now. Okay, so I actually skipped over it the first time I looked through, I couldn't find it right away, uh, but it wasn't that far in. Here it is in the catalog, boom. So there's our guy, 1939. Now this one does say 2ST on there. So it's probably that first one. Uh, number 233. Says it's worth a buck 50 used. Now actually, let me look at this. Um, this does not look used to me, it looks unused. So uh, 233, oh wow, cool. So unused actually has a better cat value at 450. How about that? Uh, yeah, uh, dull red brown. Um, yeah, I'd buy into that. I'd buy into that. So here's our guy, and uh, you can see like the torches on the side of the design, the building, the circle oval that it's in, the writing at the bottom, the AM on the left. It all looks right to me. And uh, so I'm going to buy into that. And once again, as always, I don't see anything under here uh, to look for. So. I'm gonna go with this number 233 from 1939. That one was actually pretty easy. Now, one thing that I do wanna mention that kind of throws me off a little is the perfs on this guy. I mean, they look all, uh, they're not rouletted or anything, I don't think, but um, they just look like a really older style of perf. Kind of reminds me of like uh, early Chinese stamps. Well, according to this thing, you know, th this is it. Um, it looks spot on. Uh, the design is absolutely perfect. So even though I question the perfs somewhat, I'm buying into it being that stamp. And uh, so I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it that one, number 233. So there we go. Cool. So we got it. I do want to mention, uh, I'm still even second guessing the perfs. Um, I said they're not rouletted, but there's different styles of rouletted perfs. And these ones, they're just, they just don't look like normal perfs to me. So, I mean, if anybody chimes in and they're like, hey, dude, you're totally wrong. You know, those are whatever. Those are rouletted or something. Um, they're just a weird looking perf to me. They're like perfectly square. Most perfs aren't like that. They're kind of pointed. Um, so, you know, whatever. I'm, this is just me thinking out loud about it. Sometimes I second guess myself constantly and sometimes I'm right. I'm like, no, no, it is something else. But... Uh, that, that is what I'm going to go with, number 233. Anyway, I just wanted to mention uh, some related perfs. They've got like little spaces, little um, notches in between the perfs and the uh, bigger spaces. Some of them are just more jagged, you know, almost like uh, if you ever had a, like a utility knife, like a pocket knife, they got a, kind of a serrated edge. Um, it's just a different perf style. And So anyway, I think that's what it is. Uh, and that's what I'm going with. So anyway, moving on to the next one. Let's do this United Arab, Arab Republic stamp. Now I know it's the United Arab, Arab Republic, sorry, because the UAR on there and because of my experience with stamps. So that's kind of a done deal. I'm going to hop right into the United Arab Republic and see if I can find this guy. Looks more recent than some of the others. Okay, guys, this was not a simple one. So this is where the world gets a little complicated. Now, first thing I did was I was like, UAR, United Arab Republic. I know what that stands for. I went down here in the catalog. They don't have a UAR listed in here. They have United Arab Emirates. So I clicked on that and started going through the United Arab Emirates, which was incorrect. <laughs> I couldn't find it in here. And um, I was like, okay, I, I just couldn't find it. So I said, hold on. Let me Google United Arab Republic. Now, the United Arab Republic, it was a sovereign state in the Middle East from 1958 until 71. And it was originally a political union between Egypt and Syria. Sorry. So um, from 1968 to 61 until Syria seceded from the, from the union. Now, that was my first tip. I said, haha. Okay, well, I'm going to go look at Syria. And that was my next step. Let me scroll back up went to Syria and started going through Syria and I couldn't find it either. And I thought, okay, okay, hold on. Read the information at the beginning of Syria. And so I started reading that paragraph there and it let me know the same thing about 
at least down here at the bottom, that in 1958, Syria and Egypt merged to form the UAR. Um, they left in 61 and they adopted a different name. Now it says at the very bottom of that paragraph, here, let me zoom in for you as well, it says the UAR issues for Syria are listed following their 1919 to 20 issues of the Arabian government. Okay. So the first thing I did was actually, I went and looked, you know, I mean, here we already are 1919, 1920 in this area. It's definitely not here. It's just a bunch of overprints and stuff. So I said, okay, the keyword is the government, right? The Arabian government. I said, ha ha, back of book, like official. So I went to the back of the book and was looking uh, from 1958 to 61, trying to find it in here. And uh, son of a gun, here's United Arab Republic in the back of uh, Syria. Now, these are issues for Syria and they do say UAR on them, uh, United Arab Republic, UAR, you know, so I wasn't too far off, I knew, but I went looking through and I could not find it in here. And, and I mean, 1961 starts right there and it ends here and it wasn't in here. So I said, okay, so what's next is I've checked Syria off. Let me look at Egypt then. So I made my way to Egypt and son of a gun. Um, what I did was actually originally, <coughs> just like I did in Syria, excuse me, I read the paragraph at the beginning and it tells you the same kind of information. It merged with Syria, left, they left the union. And um, so, okay. And so what I started doing was scrolling through. Um, we're looking for 1958, right? So 55, 57, okay. Um, now what, now this might've just been dumb luck, but this is also experience playing into this. We see this guy here. And when I'm looking at right under the design image is all of that information of the different designs. And I said, okay, I know I have a, what do I have? 20 M according to the stamp. So basically my eyes zoomed in on this blurb here and I said, 20M Lotus vase. I was like, haha, this whole time I've been thinking, what is that? Is that a, like a triple chalice? You know, is it a trophy? Like, what is it? And when I read in this blurb here, 20M Lotus vase, I said, haha, that's gotta be it. So what I did, scroll down and 20M is a number 481. So since I don't actually have a picture of it, of this exact stamp, I decided, which is what I often do, is I go right to Google and I said, Egypt number 481 stamp and boom, wouldn't you know it, there's my Lotus vase. So that one was kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, not blatantly apparent where it is in the catalog. You have to just deduce, you know, what are the logical steps to think through you know, how you're gonna figure out where the stamp is. And the main things that made a difference are for one thing, I Googled United Arab Republic. That keyed me into which two places it probably is in the catalog, either Syria or Egypt. Then from there, what really made the difference, to be honest, was reading the paragraph at the beginning of the section. That let me know the year, and let me know, uh, I mean, even though Google told me that, that's what gave me the confidence. I'm like, okay, cool. Like when I actually saw that it said, Syria and Egypt merged to form the United Arab Republic, you know, at this little blurb up here, um, it's like, okay. And that put me to the catalog the right year. And then I tried Syria, didn't work. Tried the back of the, uh, behind the government, like they said, didn't work. Moved on to Egypt. That was what the key was. And then besides that, I mean, you know, the thing is, the truth is, um, <clears throat> you know, the, with the whole year thing, I mean, at this section, I'm 1959, 1960, right? So I know it's somewhere 58 to 61, no matter what. And having ruled out Syria, I figured it had to be in here. Uh, now it still could have been in the back of the book here. Maybe this was a air post stamp or I don't know. You know, I, I don't know what it is. I can't read it, but ultimately, um, you know, I hopped and found the right years and then was just looking underneath 
and I, I really am uh i'm not kidding i mean this was just like hawkeye and it was just like oh, i was like it doesn't exactly look like the same design as that at all right i mean this is a vertical stamp it's totally different is the truth but um that is my clue my tip to you guys that's what i was looking for is when you see these big sections and they list them all out to scan right through it. I'm looking for a 20M, load his face, boom. So that was what did it. So that wasn't an easy one at all. The truth is, I forget this stuff. You know, I can't remember all this crap of all the whole world history. I'm sorry, I just can't. You know, I probably will forget this by a week from now. Um, it'll be fresh in my mind today and eventually I'll forget. I'll come across another UAR stamp at some point and maybe I'll have to go through all that again. But that's okay, I'll figure it out because I know I have the intellectual skills to logically work through these things to find them. And at the end of the day, let me be honest, I, you know, this is using the catalog and sense to get to figure this out. I probably could have Googled it. I probably could have Googled it from the start. Matter of fact, let me do that right now, just for fun to see if simply Googling the stamp and all I know is it's a UAR stamp with a 20M on it. Let's see if that would have been enough and would have saved me all that trouble, even though I learned, which is nice. Let's see if that would have worked. Hold on for a sec. Okay, so I Googled UAR 20M stamp. And the first thing I like to do is just go right to images. Boom, wouldn't you know it, there it is. Now, still, to properly identify the stamp, this is where this wouldn't have worked so well is let's say I click on this eBay one right here. Okay, so take me to eBay. So I know it's 1959. It doesn't tell me what Scott number it is. All I got from this is it's a 59. It's, it says it's rare and collectible, you know, whatever. And so that didn't really help me out a whole lot. Uh, let's see, maybe this one here, this is a hip stamp link. Let's click on that, Egypt. UAR, 1959, used. See, didn't tell me the Scott number. I have no idea, maybe if I go to details, nope. Aha, but here it said Egypt. That actually would have been a good clue, yeah? But um, no, I mean, see, the, going to Google didn't just straight up tell me for this specific stamp. And uh, I actually did, just for fun, dick around here in Stamp World. I thought, okay, well, let me scroll through i already know it's at the bottom so let me just scroll through it i basically look through them all until i found it boom there's my stamp it's a 20m so it's 50. um okay is it actually number 50 well let's go look in here no it's number 481 in the in the scott catalog so this is where if i was trying to find the scott catalog number for this stamp it still wouldn't have been that easy to just Google it. At the end of the day, I still kind of needed to read that stuff and go through the motions to actually find the proper number. And this is the stuff that I did when I built my albums for my grandpa and all that other stuff. I wanted to know well, what was the real Scott number. Now, some of the times, uh, sometimes they give you like the Stanley Gibbons number. Like, see, look right here, SG610. Well, that's almost worthless to me because I don't use the Stanley Gibbons, I use the Scott catalog. And that's how I'm doing it, you know, it was the choice I made, it's the ones I bought. I'm American, is how I do it, you know? And um, so could I Google, you know, what number is Stanley Gibbons 610 in the Scott catalog? Maybe, I mean, whatever, uh, not to ramble forever, but that's the stuff that I'm thinking is, how easy would it have been to actually just Google this one? Not very, and it's because I think the UAR being you know, the union of the two different countries. It just doesn't make it so obvious and clear cut what country it's under. And, and sometimes you Google a stamp, you know, you'd be like bicycle stamp, you know, um, Switzerland, you know, 10 cent, and it'll just pop up here. You'll have the picture. It'll tell you somebody's trying to sell it and they'll have the Scott number there. And it's like, boom. Usually what I do is when I actually have that info from an image, I go right to the catalog, just verify that they're correct. And if they are, boom, that just made it so easy to look stuff up. But anyways, I wanted to talk through all this. I wanted to run through this with you guys because it's just not always so clear cut. I don't think that I suck at identifying these stamps and using the different resources. Stamp World's actually a pretty good one. But then again, it didn't give me the Scott number for this, you know? So, uh, 
you have to do some work. Stamp collector takes leg work to identify these stamps correctly. And you know, if I were like a historian and I just knew everything, it would have made it that simple for me. Uh, I would have been like, oh, well, it's either Syria or Egypt. Let me go look at one or the other. And you know, but I don't know these things. I have to look them up. So psh, there you go. There's my blab on, yeah, unfortunately Google wouldn't have actually just been like a total slam dunk for this. You kind of had to go through it all and work through it. Now, I do wanna say before I uh, kind of sign off here, because I still have um, half of these stamps. Let me change my ISO back. I still have half of these stamps left over. Now, I'm not gonna be honest with you guys, I'm getting a little tired. Uh, it's a lot easier to look all these up without making the video simultaneously. I keep having to change my camera settings every time I switch to the computer and went on. Anyways, I'm kind of hungry. Anyways, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna call it good at this point. Now, I have absolutely no problem making another video where I finish going through and walking you through how I would find these in the catalog. If you guys wanna see that, please just let me know in the comments. I'll put all these in their own little stock card and save them for a potential part two of this video if you'd like to see it. Uh, so you can hear my thoughts and see the sequence that I go through and just kind of how I do it. I don't mind whatsoever. I could do that next week. But yeah, that was actually a fairly big pile to make this video. I'm sure the video is longer than I intended already. And I'm just going to kind of move on, get some food in my belly. And uh, at the end of it all, I mean, hey, I have definitely identified some of these stamps. And it's been nice um, <clears throat> to kind of talk through it. I, this is the stuff that I usually end up thinking. And I don't really talk to anybody. I do it all alone. And this is the sequence that I go through. I use different tools, different methods for different ones. And uh, sometimes I can spend a whole bunch of time uh, trying to identify a stamp and just have to use every trick that I possibly can to uh, ultimately end up finally figuring out what the stamp is. You know, it's just not easy. And uh, so anyway, this is number 481. Oh, it actually does say it's 1960. Uh, and it is a 90 cent cat value. Now, let me show you this one final little piece of information here, uh, just so that you can see. <clears throat> In the catalog, it says, right, 20M Crimson 481. That's our Lotus face. It actually has the year it was actually released specifically for that stamp in parentheses next to it. So I don't have to say, well, 59 to 60, was it a 59 or a 60? It actually tells me. So I know this one was released 1960. So anyway, final little tip there for this video. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this helps some of you guys out there who will use these digital catalogs and bet you it's a little bit different in the book. Uh, if you have the paperback version of these, but I actually personally love this Scott catalog. Luckily, I bought this one before they became a subscription service that you have to pay for annually, all that yada yada. Um, I actually just paid good money and bought these. Now I kind of own them forever. And uh, this is the older version catalog that I'm using. And I'll be darned if I don't prefer this over what uh, Scott is now doing. Uh, uh, let's see, Ted Talk Stamps has a video about that where he kind of goes into detail about how screwed up they are with their, their new subscription based catalogs. Um, how screwed up is that? These ones that I, I had bought back in 2020 or 2021, uh, one time purchase and you got it, you know, done deal. But the new ones, they update with updated values. They have updated descriptions and pictures and, uh, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of gimmicks about why their new catalog is better, but, uh, I happen to have this older version. So if any of you guys have this version, then you can do it pretty much the same as me. Use everything you got, use the catalog, use your brain, use Google. Google images, you know, um, look at the stamps, see what information you can ascertain from them, even if you don't speak the language. And then my final tip will be, um, I actually did a video about this, but sometimes you can use Google translate on these stamps and uh, you just got to pick your language, hover your phone over it, use the Google translate app, and it can decipher some of this gibberish for you if you can't read it. Uh, so that that's another tool that you can use. Anyways, that's it for the day. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. It helps me out. Also, 
If you guys really would like to see me identify the rest of these, let me know in the comments and I'll make the video. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.